What is antimatter? And antimatter is the, really the opposite of matter. It's equal in mass, but it's opposite in charge. On the left you see hydrogen. It's a proton and electron. Now the equivalent in antimatter are, it's an atom that's made of its antiparticles. For the electron it's positron, and for the proton it's an antiproton. Put them together and that creates an atom that's antimatter. Now the term itself originates uh, back to 1898, but really the modern theory of antimatter uh, started in 1928 when Paul Dirac proposed the antiparticle called the electron, uh, or sorry, the antiparticle to the electron, and it's called the positron, and it was discovered in 1932. And so every particle has an antiparticle because it's really just opposite charge. For the electron, as I mentioned, it's the positron, and again, for the proton, it's called the antiproton. And when they combine to form atoms, this is matter on the left and antimatter on the right. But when you combine them, matter and antimatter, when they interact, they annihilate. And most of what we see is matter. Why? Why is it mostly matter in the universe? Well, first let's do an explanation, right, of what really matter and antimatter are. Now, particles consist of standing waves, at least in energy wave theory they do, and one of the key rules is particles always move to minimize wave amplitude. Now, in a standing wave, which is what particles are, standing wave has two nodes per wavelength. Right, where amplitude is zero, and that's the rule for motion, is to minimize wave amplitude. Well, where is it going to move to? It'll move to a node, because that is zero amplitude. And that's really the distinction between matter and antimatter. It's a position on this wave, since there are two nodes, and those nodes are spaced exactly at a half wavelength from each other. And that spacing, either a wavelength uh, or a half wavelength makes a difference between constructive wave interference or destructive wave interference. One will repel, the top one will if it's constructive, and that'd be two electrons, for example, or two positrons. But if they are opposite charge and they're spaced at half wavelength, it is destructive wave interference. That minimizes amplitude, and the rule of motion is for particles to minimize their amplitude, thus they're attracted. Here you have just a quick summary of the you know, potential nodes. There's only two of them, so a proton and positron are on the same node, and an electron and an antiproton are on the opposite node. Here's a better visual of it, of what makes matter. Those two different nodes on a standing wave, one belongs to an electron, and the other belongs to a proton in regular matter, and in antimatter it's the opposite, antiproton and positron. But again, just two nodes. But we still have the mystery, right? The antimatter mystery is why does matter dominate the universe? Well, let's take a look at some poss possibilities, right? We assume it's non-symmetrical and that matter dominates the universe. All right, so maybe it's just a coincidence. Particles ended up on, on those particular nodes, right? Um, the more likely scenario, and this is what uh, scientists are, are chasing right now. There's enough smart people working on this that I won't get into detail, but something happened early in the universe to break that initial symmetry. And if so, what is it? Now, the two possibilities that I want to explore in a little bit more detail are, what if it is symmetrical and we just can't see it? Right? Antimatter and matter are equal, but either one, we can't see the other half of the universe, that's antimatter. Or two, we actually don't see the antiparticles, but they're locked up in nucleons that surround us and we just don't know it. All right, let's like take a look at both of those. So for the first one, now how do we detect galaxies? Well, from photons, you know, for example, a light, uh, a telescope, and you're looking at the lights, and there's other forms of photons, for example, detecting gamma rays, microwaves, uh, but with a simple telescope we can look up into the sky and detect galaxies. That's how it happens. 
Now, the interesting thing, though, is that the photon is its own antiparticle. It doesn't matter if it's generated from regular matter or antimatter. Uh, a photon is just light to us. And so what makes this interesting is that the distance, uh, distant galaxy actually could be antimatter. We wouldn't know it. We actually wouldn't know it unless a galaxy and a uh, matter galaxy and an antimatter galaxy um, combined and they would annihilate. Then we would detect it. But of course, if they're standalone, we wouldn't. We wouldn't know. And so that does leave the possibility that the universe is symmetrical, uh, but really only if the antimatter galaxies are sufficiently separated from matter galaxies. Um, again, if they were close, we would certainly know as they annihilated. All right, but that's possibility number one. The next possibility, though, uh, comes from the structure of the proton according to energy wave theory. And if you want the details of all this and how it matches um, experiments, the structure of the proton, uh, go see the what's, uh, what's in a proton video. I'm not going to cover those details here, but in that video, a proton consists of the pentaquark structure, which was found in, uh, by CERN in 2015. And in the pentaquark, uh, let's assume four electrons are at the vertices of the tetrahedron and the positron in the middle. Now, also in that explanation and video, a neutron has a positron and electron in the middle. But now let's make one slight tweak to that video and that explanation of the neutron. And it could either be the neutron or it could be half the protons that we have out there. It doesn't matter. But let's assume that the four tetrahedral uh, electrons are replaced by positrons. It does the exact same thing. It would still have a strong force. They would still be tightly bound together as long as they were separated uh, at wavelengths. Now the interesting thing about this model now is that you start to build an atom, an equal number of protons and electrons, and let's assume you know a neutron is also paired with each proton. If you total up this, this is what becomes an atom and matter. If you total that up, these particles are made of six electrons and six positrons total. That's regular matter that we see, but we just don't realize that positrons, which is antimatter, are kind of hidden there in the nucleon. Again, just a possibility, but that does mean that it's possible that the universe is symmetric.